My name is Sarah Hargis Ferguson. I'm a professor in Communication Sciences and Disorders, which is part of the College of Health. My co-authors are Lydia Rogers and Shane Morgan, also from CSD, and Eric Hunter at Michigan State University. And the study I'm going to talk about is part of a larger project that's looking at differences between men and women in terms of the way that they adjust to different demands when they're talking. Our overarching hypothesis is that men and women differ in the way that they accommodate to different demands. So, and, and that these differences um, at least partially explain why women have such a higher incidence of voice disorders than men do. Um, on a lifelong scale, about half of women can expect to experience a voice disorder versus only about a third of men. Um, in the experiments in my labs, our participants or talkers perform a variety of speech tasks, reading a passage, reading a list of sentences, or describing a picture in several different conditions designed to simulate situations in the real world where talkers have to adapt to their, con their situation. One such situation would be talking to someone who has hearing loss. To simulate this, we have two speaking style conditions that we elicit through instructions to the talkers. We have a conversational speech condition where talkers are instructed to speak as conversationally as possible while they're carrying out these speech tasks. And we have a clear speech condition where they're instructed to speak as though they're talking to someone who's hard of hearing. In future studies, talkers will provide or perform conversational and clear speech in four different environment conditions, which will be presented via earphones. So they'll either be speaking in a quiet environment, in either a moderately or a very noisy environment, and then or in a reverberant condition. Um, so we'll have these four different conditions, but we didn't know prior to this study whether conversational speech is remain stable if you do this four times, or if clear speech is stable when you do this four times. So this was a sort of a, well, here's an experiment to get us started, and we'll just have our talkers come and do these tasks four times and see how stable conversational and clear speech are. If there were fatigue effects or practice effects, we didn't want those to be offsetting the effects of the conditions. Um, and we also need to know, of course, since we're our question is about gender. We need to know whether this differs from male versus female talkers. So in the study, talkers came to the lab. They performed our set of speech tasks four times with no environmental manipulations. We did um, acoustic analyses after that to see whether and or how a variety of different features changed over these four repetitions. Um, and today, I'm just talking about the first versus the fourth repetition. So we had, um, our talkers were five females and five males from the psychology participant pool. They were aged 18 to 24, had self-reported normal hearing, and all had reported that they grew up in Utah. So we didn't have any dialect differences there. They came in for two test sessions, and in each session they performed a set of three speech tasks, reading a passage called the Rainbow Passage, reading a list of sentences, and then describing a picture. And they did this task set four times. We encouraged them to take a break, have a sip of water after each task set. In the first session, they were instructed to speak conversationally. In the second session, they were instructed to speak clearly. We then made acoustic measures of um, features that we know are different between conversational and clear speech. So from the sentence list, we took out the vowels e, a, a, and u and measured how far apart those vowels are from each other in terms of their frequency characteristics. And that measure is called vowel space. Then from the passage, we took mes uh, measures of speaking rate, so how quickly they're speaking in syllables, syllables per second, the median voice pitch, and then the voice pitch range. And we expect in clear speech we'll have a bigger vowel space, a slower speaking rate, higher voice pitch, and a larger pitch range. The first analysis we did was a three-way mixed ANOVA with speaking style and then task set as within subjects factors and then gender as a between subjects. And we saw the gender effects that we expected. It was highly significant for voice pitch, so females have a higher voice pitch, and for pitch range with females having a bigger pitch range. These are exactly what we expected. Women also had a slower speaking rate than men. Um, importantly, Talker gender never interacted with speaking style or with the task set. So any effects that we find for style or task set won't be, if, won't be different for the males versus the female talkers if we have to correct for that. Since gender never interacted with style or repetition, we then did a two-way repeated measures ANOVA, just looking at those two factors. Uh, we found some clear speech effects that we expected. We had a, a bigger vowel space in clear speech, a slower speaking rate in clear speech. 
Um, in terms of repetition effects, we found that vowel space and pitch range both increased from the first production to the fourth production. Um, and we think that this has to do with practice effects, that they come into their conversational speech condition, they read, they do the passage, the sentences, the picture task, and then they've practiced. And then we see more relaxed speech. Um, well, it's, it's careful, but they're better at reading, so they can be more careful. Um, it was a complicated result to explain. Um, so we see a practice effect certainly from the first time to the fourth time. We don't know yet whether if over the four tasks, over the four tasks, if it went one, two, three, four, or if it went one, two, three, four. And so we're carrying out those analyses now to figure out where the practice effect kicks in. And then when we do the, ex the next experiment where we have the actual simulated environments with the noise and the reverberation, we'll go ahead and organize everything in the protocol so that we can overcome those practice effects.